Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of the Level Up Podcast. I've got Greg Harrelson here. We've got a great guest. Pat Hyben is with us today. We've got a ton of stuff to dive into today, but we're going to start off and let's just jump right in. First of all, Greg, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Excited as I am every week and ready to have a powerful conversation with Pat. Been itching right. to talk to Pat. <laughs> Pat, how are you today? Good. How you doing, Matt? Doing well. So first of all, just Pat, for anybody that's been hiding under a proverbial rock lately, just let them know and remind them of what you do about the podcast and about the community that you're building behind the scenes with Rebus University real quick. Sure. Um, so we have a podcast, Real Estate Rockstars. Uh, it comes out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we've had uh, over a million and a half downloads uh, uh, on it. We're in 127 countries now. And um, and basically, we're talking all things real estate. Uh, as you know, podcasts are completely free, so it's a great source of information. And then uh, to monetize that, I have a university where I have um, uh, uh, courses uh, that help real estate agents make more commissions. We have a certified team agent course with Jeff Cohn, as you know. We have a certified listing agent course, which is our number one course right now um, on how to do uh, – listing appointment which uh, Brendan Payne uh, one of Greg's top agents is on um, where we analyze eight agents listing appointments we have uh, a new one that just came out called the five alive from an agent named Chantel Ray in Virginia Beach that guarantees seventy five thousand dollars a year salary to all her buyers agents um, and um, and we created a course out of that so that's kind of what we do we find the best practices in real estate agents film them and create courses out of them. Very cool. And that's uh, that's a great jumping off point for our conversation because we we're talking behind the scenes and we got into a little bit about what it takes to actually coach agents and get get that behavior change that actually will get them results. Because like you said, Greg, we've all we've all figured out how to deliver information to agents. Right. So the information is no longer the problem. Derek Sivers has a great quote where he says, if information were, uh, were the problem, we'd all be billionaires with uh, six pack abs. So we figured <laughs> that out. Um, now the question is, how do you get people to execute on the on the information they learn? So, Greg, let's start with you. You, that's basically you've made your name in the business for being an extremely good leader and for developing a team and a culture around you that that encourages behavior change and gets them to execute on what you're teaching. So let's start with you and with some insights into what do you feel like you've done maybe differently than other people that's led to that. Okay, yeah, I think um, you know I, I guess and this all revolves around the the conversation that everyone's having and 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 wants to learn more about, which is team building, right? Building a yeah. team and and being able to scale their business. And um, you know, I, I I always say that I don't really own a real estate company. What I do is I own a coaching company. Now I say that, please, I don't want a bunch of emails. Hey, can you coach me? The, the answer is no. I only coach and train the agents within my organization, the agents within my companies. Um, but I just want to start by saying that who I am as a leader is a person who develops talent. Okay, I'm a coach of my company. And I think step number one is to really identify who you are as a company owner, as a team leader. You got to make sure you know who you are. You may be out there thinking, hey, who I am is somebody that's going to go do as many deals as I can, you know, and make as much money as, as, as I can. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's not me. Who I am is I am somebody who's committed to developing talent within my organization, and I want to help them make as much money as they possibly can. Okay, so I think it really starts right there is what is your true intention? What is the essence behind what you do every single day? And I think that's probably helped me um, the most when it comes to the leadership within the organization, because like you said, we can all give information. I mean, listen, Google anything you need to Google, any question you have, just Google it about real estate. If you need scripts, Google scripts. You'll have so many script books at your, at your beck and call for free. You won't know what to do with it. So I don't know that scaling information is really what's key with our companies and our teams. I think what we got to do is we got to skill relationship. Now we got to skill with the, the, or scale relationship. We've got to scale time. We've got to figure out how to spend more time 
with our team, with our agents. And that's the thing that you find everybody's doing the opposite. They're saying, I want to take myself out of the business. I want to spend less time with the people. And then they're complaining that the people are not executing at the ground level. I think the opposite. You have to spend time with them, and then that will inspire to inspire them to execute at a level that you never imagined was possible. Uh, Pat, so let's turn to you and get your perspective on it, because you, you've been at every level. You've been a mega producer. You've been a team leader, and now you're getting into the area of kind of providing very niche, extremely high-quality information products to agents to help them kind of model those best practices, but you're not able to necessarily spend the time personally, like one-on-one -on -one, actually getting people to implement. So what do you think is the key to actually getting them to change and incorporate some of the stuff that you guys are teaching and the stuff that you learn on their podcast into their business? Yeah. So that's a great question. I actually had an opportunity yesterday. So it's literally fresh in my mind to interview Steve Murray, who's with Real Trends, um, who puts out Lore Magazine and the Real Trends top 500 agents with the Wall Street Journal and top 500 teams with the Wall Street Journal. And one of the other things that he does is he, he is a broker for real estate companies and uh, an appraiser for real estate companies and helps um, put together transactions. And he just put, a trans he put the largest transaction together for a real estate team literally closed last week um, and we'll get into some details about that and who bought it because it's important about this. So, so what happened was um, what he found and I asked him point blank on the show, I said a really strict question. I said, what is your opinion of expansion? Mm -hmm. And then I just shut up. <laughs> And uh, he said to me, he said, it only works if the person you hire on the other end of wherever you're expanding to is dynamite, is like killer, right? He said, if you try to be the leader of another expansion office an hour and a half away, you're not good en a good enough leader. You need to have a leader over there that is as good as you, you know? Um, and he says, that is what it boils down to, period. I had uh, Lisa Archer on my show, I think it was episode 448, and she admitted that she, you know, she's from like North Carolina, Charlotte, I believe, or Raleigh. Yeah, yeah. Charlotte. And, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, and, and she created um, an expansion office in New Jersey and completely laid an egg. Right, completely laid an egg. Like, like it, it, it. The first couple months it was great, and then after that, it, it dropped the shin up, shutting it down. Um, then she um, created another one somewhere else. I can't remember where. Florida, I think. Right, and um, uh, that one is is prospering. I I talked to uh, Kristen Cole, who does the expansion for Keller Williams. She same thing. She had. Uh, her best expan she's from Alaska. Her best expansion is in another part of Alaska, yeah. right? She had a couple. She did one in Arizona. She's done a she's done like five or six. Um, they're like 50 50. Half of them are kind of struggling. Half of them are are, are doing okay. Um, but the point is, it, it's only going to boil down to your leader who you put in place. If you try to lead seven expansion teams through Zoom, um, according to Steve Murray, and I would have to agree with him, chances are six out of seven are going to fail, no matter how good of a leader you are, no matter how charismatic you are. Hmm. I, I would, based on what I've seen, I would lean towards 100% agreement. I don't know about you, Greg, but that's – because it, it really comes down to leadership and it comes down to it, it, you're like going back to the whole level up concept. It's one thing to be a leader where you are directly leading the people that do the work. It's a whole other level to be the kind of leader that can lead other people that lead other people. And that requires I, yeah. growth on the leader's part. I, I, yeah. Continual growth. You have to be mm -hmm. a, committed to a lifetime of learning. But I think it also probably um, – I'm wondering what your opinion is on this, but I think that maybe um, – a lot of people that call themselves leaders 
um, really don't want to create leaders because all of a sudden maybe the attention will go away from them and go towards somebody else. So I think it also requires um, uh, us to be humble in understanding, you know, that it's kind of like your child. Like, you know, if, 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 if I'm selling real estate at a high level and my child was to come into real estate because that's what he chose to do, the reality is, is you'll have one person, one father always wants hopes that the kid never beats him. And then you'll have another father that says, you know what, the greatest joy is the day that my kid is actually better than me. And I think that's the leadership we have to be, is we have to be looking for and wanting to leave our industry knowing that who we taught is going to kick our butt, uh, who we taught is going to be able to outdo us. Because I think that's a sign of a great leader right there, is when yeah. their agents are beating them. Yeah, yeah. And, and great leaders, for the most part, are not going to um, – go to work for someone who's a worse leader than them. The, you know, for, for that son to be better than the dad, the dad has to lead that son to that point, right? So same thing. You're not going to be – if you're a, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, if you're a 5 for a leader, like you're not that good of a leader, the market is just really good, and you happen to hire 20 buyer agents that sell one house a month each, you're not going to be able to, main, to be able to retain an agent – uh, to lead another expansion office for you that's better than you. You have to find somebody who's massively talented and grow them because that's yep. what they're getting from you is they're, they're getting from you mentorship. Am I making any sense? Yeah, yep. I, absolutely. And Matt, it kind of goes back to what I've said about the, and this is how Level Up, the name Level Up podcast came about, is like, you know, I've got a poster that I need to share with the audience sometime that says, you know, you bring, I, basically what I'm committed to is bringing people into the industry and creating agents. And then I'm creating, I, and then I'm committed to taking agents and transforming them into top producers. And then taking top producers and then guiding them to become entrepreneurs and then taking entrepreneurs entrepreneurs that have went through this whole pattern and make them my partners. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like no matter where we are, there's always developing. There's always growth. It's built into our company. And Brendan, who's on Pat's um, – on that listing uh, – the, the, the listing training that he has with Rebus, Brendan Payne, my partner, he's an exact example. He comes from you know a Lowe's background and in, in, in management area management gets into real estate you know doesn't know anything about real estate obviously follows the 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 program next thing you know he's doing a hundred deals next thing you know he's my partner and we're opening up a company together and now he's being a leader you know that's and so we've got to I think. I, you know, those that are out there exploring the possibility of expanding and being teams, you know, you've got to understand that your job is to help others get to the next level. And that that's what we need to be focusing on, not focusing on getting to the next level, focusing on helping others get to the next level and just understand that we're all on the same bus. So we will all rise together. But, yeah. and you know, but my job, I feel my job is, is to walk up to the wall and to bend over, get on all fours and let my team members actually then go and climb over the wall. And when they get to the top of the wall, I'm hoping that they'll reach down and pull me up and then we'll go to the next wall and we'll repeat the process. I'll let them step on my back to get over to the top, take me to the top with you, and then I'll run ahead and bust my butt and scout it out and figure it out all again. And we'll just keep doing that and we'll all get to the summit. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, getting back to the, kind of the scaling conversation. So, and, and Pat, I don't know if you want to show it, but uh, the, we we're talking about that phrase where we went live. Love is time, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Sure. Sure. This is a tattoo. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Here you go. Love, love is, is spelled T-I-M-E. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, Greg, you were talking about just how that translates out into how people perceive love, right? It's perceived in terms of the time that you spend with them, the emotional investment that you make with them. So 
How do you, like you've got, I mean, I don't know how, how big your team is in terms of just the sheer number of agents you have spread across multiple offices, but obviously they can't all be with you, Greg, in your office, right? So you're, you're finding ways to kind of scale out the time that you're giving to every agent. We've talked a little bit before about the return on time and making sure that your coaching is spent in those high leverage areas and those high leverage questions. But um, what are some other tips and some, uh, some things that you do to make sure that you're scaling time and giving those agents the right amount of time for them? You know, I think where um, w one of the things that I'm doing, and I think where some people are making the mistake, is they're they're trying to find somebody to replace the leader's communication. In other words, for for instance, there's about 105 agents, I think, is 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 on in in our in our system right now in our companies, and. Yeah. Every Tuesday, 10:45, without fail, unless I'm, you know, out of uh, out of town and just can't do it. Um, but majority of every Tuesday, 10:45, I'll have a conference call. So what I'm doing is is um, you no, know, if you're in Charleston, if you're in North Myrtle Beach, if you're in wherever you are, if you're a part of our our, our organization, you're logging into this call, and I'm actually thinking of what I'm going to train on, what am I going to coach on, I'm and, and I'm sending that or I'm having that call live with maybe let's just say 70 people on the phone at that point. So where a lot of other team leaders, what they're doing is they're trying to say, I want to remove myself from the business. All I'm saying is I don't want to remove myself from the business. I wouldn't know what to do. I love this business. But what I love most is I love developing people. So I'm, I'm making sure that I can scale. In other words, I can spend one 45-minute call on a phone, on a conference line, and I can reach 100 people or 10,000 people. The key is, is I didn't replace myself with somebody else to have that call. Right. And that's where a lot of people are saying, I want to, I want to remove myself as yep. if that's mailbox money. And it's not mailbox money. That's not what these teams are. It still requires work. So you're going to have to still invest time. I choose to be one of the choices that I've made is the thing that I figure I'm going to delegate last is my connection to the people. Yeah, that is really good. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. The thing that you delegate last is the connection with your people. But here's the tricky part, right? How do we do that in a virtual world? Because like what Steve Murray said yesterday was it's very difficult. He says, I, I said, I said to him, I said, what about some of these companies like EXP and, and some of these other guys that are going out there and they're very, the, the whole thing's a virtual company. And um, he says at the end of the day, and I, I don't know if I agree with this or not yet because my, um, my, uh, my company that I'm creating now with Rebus University is completely virtual, right? I'm in, I'm in my dining room here, kitchen, you know what I mean? Like I, I, everyone that works for me, except for one guy I've never shaken hands with. Um, so I can't give an opinion on this quite yet. But what Steve says is that at the end of the day, people want to be physically in the same room with people a certain amount of time. There needs to be some brick and mortar even if it's just a meeting space where you have meetings, um, what, what do you guys think about that? I mean, how difficult is it, um, Greg, do you think to be in Myrtle Beach and, and run an office in Charleston if, um, you know, if Brendan wasn't, you know, there or didn't go there ever? Yeah, I think what – You what's, never went there. Yeah, what, what's really – I think is really difficult – is if you try to transition somebody that's used to being there every day and then you take yourself out of the equation because yeah, now you're taking something away, right? Okay. Um, so when you're building something new, I think what you have to be careful of is don't get the new trend, uh, the new company or new expansion used to that type of scenario. You then build your own type of co uh, coaching uh, strategies, your coaching systems, and then you stay committed to those. So I think it's possible, but I think there's a delusion. There's no, I, I do believe that like for, for a great leader, for players to, to be right next to them every single day, they're probably going to perform a little bit better than players that are not connected to them physically every day. But I think the ones that are connected virtual, virtually to great leaders are going to outperform everyone else in the market. 
So there right. is a delusion, but I think that, you know, it's kind of when it comes to expansion, it's probably unrealistic to think that you're ex or, or, or it's not not fair to, to think that expansion's only going to be when you can physically be in that location. I don't think that that's going to be the case. And I think as years go on and the generation that text, you know, from upstairs to downstairs versus like walk down the stairs, I think they're going to actually demand physical um, proximity less and less over time. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Well, the jury's not out and, and, and yeah. we'll see and I'll, I'll see myself. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm dealing with that now as I'm hiring more and more people. And I'm like, I just said this morning, I said, man, we need to have a regular Zoom meeting every, like you do, every Tuesday or whatever, because, um, you know, communication starting to get lost and, and people are, you know, we're not feeling as connected with certain employees. So, um, yeah, yeah so, it's not yeah. easy. And I think and I've, I've read a lot. I don't know if you guys have, but uh, are you guys familiar with the guys that um, co founded Basecamp? Jason Freed, David uh, Hennemeyer Hansen, I believe is their names. They wrote like several books, including Rework, which is an amazing book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah. their entire company is virtual. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, their perspective on it is that it can be done, and they're hiring highly skilled uh, people all across the world, and they get the best talent pool. So there, there's two things there. Number one is that you're getting very highly skilled people. So even if you're not squeezing out that last 10% of performance out of them, the fact that they're so much better than the average person you could hire locally makes up for it. And the other part of that is I think that they didn't mention this, but I, I believe this to be true, which is that uh, there's a difference between like they're, they're hiring people with self-leadership. Right. And Greg, you know, there's a difference between self-leadership when you're executing on something that you enjoy doing, where it's your it's your your passion. Um, I think the people that maybe get into real estate, that's they're not necessarily passionate about the business. They might be passionate about what they get. They might be passionate about the rewards. But the day to day activities, it takes some time to really develop that. And mm -hmm. if you're taking somebody from, you know, from zero to trying to get them to 10, 15, 20 deals, they don't know the work involved and they don't have a passion for it yet. And so how do you teach that person to have self-leadership when they, they don't, they're not passionate about the actual work, the actual picking up the phone and just making the calls? So I think yeah. that's where it may become so important to have that culture where you have 30 other people in the office that are making those calls. Hey, you just plug in, like just grab a seat. There's 30 other people doing the same thing. Just copy them. Yeah. You know what it, it, it boils down to is it's tr we're tribal by nature. We're tribal, mm -hmm. right? And so even if you if you've got 15 people that are all doing one thing, and 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 then you bring two introduce two more people into that tribe, the two people are probably going to start doing what the 15 others do. The 15 are not going to start doing what the two did. Mm -hmm. And if the two don't actually join the 15, then the two are just going to leave. Yeah. Okay, so that is that culture is it, when it comes to you know thinking of it from a tribal standpoint that 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 culture is very very important and for those that are looking to expand you you know it starts with just one person it starts with you and yourself you've got to have the right culture and then you 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 become a team of two and then you got to keep that culture team of three you got to keep that culture at some point there's a tipping point where you cross this line where the culture will actually attract and push people away it'll yep. attract people to it or it'll push people away and it's pretty interesting when you get to that point but uh but i yeah, i my, think my this, this whole conversation is important the, uh... Yeah. And my feeling on it based on you know, coming from a Christian background might be that it's 12. Just <laughs> Jesus' ex oh. example that maybe he, there's a reason he picked that number. Mm. You know, maybe that is kind of the natural human point where you go, OK, this is where the culture becomes so ingrained that you that you can have that leader pull out a little bit. And yeah. the culture will stay. Anyway, yeah. just throwing that out there. All right, guys. So this is something I've, I've been curious about with you, Greg, and I want to get your, your perspective on it too, Pat. So Greg, you're super Mike Ferry background, Pat, you're obviously a hard charging prospector by nature too. So, but you're both very plugged into what's going on and all the new developments in the sense that it's getting more and more difficult to reach out there and start relationships cold, at least just by picking up the phone, right? So you've built a culture that's in, in large part around that. So how do you see that? Like, how do you guys see that transitioning as it becomes more towards a reaching out through technology, getting people to raise their hand before we can actually get them on the phone. There's all these things that kind of have to happen before we can have that first conversation. So Pat, let's start with you. Um, how do you see that kind of affecting the culture that you try to build if you do have, and you come from that hardcore prospecting background, and now you're having to adjust all these new tools? 
I, I think it's, I, I think it's um, everything has a process and email and texting is great as part of the process. And be, by that, I mean the goal is to get the person on the phone, mm -hmm. right? By any means necessary. Now, you might not want to pick it up and call them right away, but you might want to text them and say, when are you available for a phone call? Right. You might want to email them yeah. and say, when are you available for the phone call? Mm -hmm. um, and you could use that as a way to get to the phone call. And then the phone call is a way to get to the appointment. And yeah. I think if you try to shortchange it, um, you know, your failure rate is that much greater. I think you have to go text or email, phone, appointment, just like that. If you try to go, you know, try to skip a step and you go text to appointment, it, it it makes it that much harder. Yeah, yeah, there's no relationship built. So even if you manage to get an appointment set, you'll have a high cancellation rate. Right. Yeah, yep. Greg, what do you think? I, I think whoever's leading the charge that's saying that um, old school prospecting um, is kind of changing and technology and there's new ways, I think that what you're doing, anybody who's saying that, and not to offend anybody, but I think it's probably people that never did what we did on an old school. So they're, they're actually forming an opinion without past experiences. OK, mm. and, and I think their opinion is being influenced by all the vendors that are out there trying to sell us everything. You know, yeah. and saying this is the quick way. So I actually am going to argue that that old school prospecting methods have never been better than in, in my career. Now, here's the thing. I could argue and I might be able to accept an argument that maybe you don't make as many contacts today as you did before. But technology allows us to be more efficient and effective so we don't have to make as many contacts in order to close the same amount of deals. So before, maybe I had to make 100 con or 60 contacts a day. Well, now I might be able to make 30 contacts a day, but because technology is allowing me to engage and nurture with these contacts so much better and things like what I do in infusion software it raises you know it raises a flag if somebody's engaging and watching certain things because of those th those uh, technologies I might be able to do 30 contacts instead of 60 and still actually see an increase in my business because my conversion ratios are higher so I think the new the all the new things that are out there if we use them correctly they're great for conversion but just remember everything that's out there requires somebody to be in there in other words all these databases and all this it requires some sort of contact to actually build the database so we can right. either get the contact by a facebook ad and they and, and and we capture their email and get them into the database and then we call them or we could just go and pick up the phone and call them you're going to get more people into your ecosystem by p picking up the phone and making the calls. I think that's the way it is today. I know for certain that that's how it has been in the past. I will, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but that's, that's my take on it. I actually don't think it's changed. I think the only thing that's changed is the conversation that's being had by the new agents that are coming into the business. And when they get into the business year or month one, they're being attacked by all these technologies and then they're never learning the old school. So the people that are saying this, actually not many of them did it. The people who did it when Pat did it and I did it still believe in it. Gotcha. Makes total sense. I like it. I well, might get somebody mad at me about that I'm one. sure you will. <laughs> Most, <laughs> mostly the purveyors of lead generation companies and things like that, but that's all right. Yeah, and, and, and let me say this, Matt. I'm pro lead generation companies. I, I'm you. not, I have no problem. I, I don't, I think we all have a place, but I think what's unfortunate is that some people are thinking that they can go right to lead generation and, and start making a mint day one. There's other things that have to be done. I think these lead generation companies and, and all these technologies are great enhancements to a business built off of a foundation of outbound um, generation. They're enhancements is mm -hmm. what I believe. Gotcha. All right. Well, Pat, let's turn back to you. I don't know if you want to render any final thoughts on that. You're certainly welcome to, but I also want you to kind of prompt people where to find the podcast and Rebus University and things like that as we uh, as we close out. 
Yeah, no, I agree with Greg. I mean, you, you, you can't be afraid of the phone. I think that um, there's probably young people listening that says Greg is just saying that because he's old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he doesn't know how to text. Um, but uh, <laughs> nor does he check his social medias, which may, which part of it may be true, you know. And there, I think there is benefits that can be found. I mean, I, you know, I've interviewed guys on my show that 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 basically just get all their business from Facebook. Now they do, you know, they are PMing people on Facebook. They are, you know, communicating with them on Facebook and that sort of thing. But again, it's it's a it's a means to an end and that end is, is a phone call or an appointment. Um, and that's what we have to remember at all times. I think the majority of the lead services, I know there's a huge deficit. I, I've talked to Sam Monreal who owns a company called Rockerbox. All they do is sort through all these terrible leads that, that people get from Zillow, Trulia. And by terrible, I just mean um, leads that are diluted massively. Um, and he says there's a lead shortage um, uh, meaning the average lead, the average buyer where it used to be uh, one agent would get one buyer. Now there's like 12 agents for every buyer, like 12 agents know every buyer exists and could or could not be following up with them. Um, and so um, to, to deal with those and to, to make them a lot better quality, it, it you know, you need to cut right to the chase and either get them on the phone or, or get, get them face to face. And that's it. You know, yeah. um, yeah. I like it. So, you know, it's I, a race. It's a race to the con. It's not a skill competition. The first contact has nothing to do with skill. It has to do with speed. It's a very mm-hmm. important thing. Distinction. Yes. Now, once the speed, once you have won the race to contact, then it comes back to the skill. Yeah. And so I think people are not understanding that they're actually in a race with 12 other people. And that's right. why I've said that, you know, whoever keeps talking about real, um, of, of response time within five minutes, that's three years ago. Here's the proper, <laughs> the proper, the proper yeah, response time. Seconds, right? No, it's real time. Mm-hmm. The proper response time is real time. Yeah, that's while the they're game. still there, while they're still on there looking at the house, like yep, it's real time. Better, you know, they're like they're like looking at a photo like this, and the phone rings. And yes, that's it. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yep, I like that a lot. I mean, and that's true, and that's true, and um, so yep. <laughs> All right, well, Pat, remind people of where they can get the show and how to find out about more uh, more about Rebus University. Yeah, sure. Real, it's called uh, Real Estate Rockstars. It can be found anywhere. Uh, you listen to podcasts. Um, you can uh, find me anywhere you want. Uh, I'm very easy to find, but uh, um, I have a website, pathyben.com, H-I-B-A-N. It has links to all my other websites. Uh, Rebus University is rebusuniversity.com. Very cool. And then, uh, Greg, same for you. Greg Harrelson at gmail.com. I try to make it as easy as I can. And, and, or maybe I'm thinking I'm making it easy and Pat's just right. I'm too old to figure out all the other stuff that, <laughs> that, that you guys have figured out. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, like I always say, you know, I, um, I enjoy, you know, um, you know, the podcast, I enjoy sharing and giving and contributing to the community of real estate professionals all around the country. So Greg Harrelson at gmail.com. I'm happy to answer questions and whatnot. Just, uh, want to do my part to make sure that I leave, uh, uh, the audience with nuggets to help them take them to the next level. That's right. Yep. And you do a phenomenal job with that. I was taking notes myself for the future, just uh, stuff that I won't even put in the show notes, just stuff for me. So uh, with that said, guys, subscribe to the show on YouTube, or you can go to iTunes and Stitcher if you want the audio versions. Uh, on the website for the podcast, which is uh, the leveluppodcast.com, uh, if you click on uh, the link there, you can get a free training video on how to get started with marketing automation. So if you're curious, Greg, you mentioned just very briefly, you touched on uh, integrating Infusionsoft and some, some of the different things that you're working on with your team. Uh, there are already a whole package of 
campaigns that you've written up that people can find out about. But if they're just curious about dipping their toe into that world and what it can do for their business, that's a great like a 20 minute intro training video that we put together on that topic. So guys, you can go to the podcast website and get that for absolutely free. So with that said, guys, we really appreciate it. This is exactly uh, the kind of high level like mastermind conversation that me and Greg had in mind. We appreciate everybody watching that was with us live, guys, and we will see you on the next one.